This is the Breakfast Leadership Podcast. Boundaries or burnout, you make the choice. Here's your host, Michael Levitt. Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Podcast. It's Michael here, and I have a very special guest with me today, Marie Elizabeth Molly. How are you today, Marie Elizabeth? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm happy to be here with you. Happy that you are here. We met at the New Media Summit back in February 2019. And uh, one of the things, just to let people know, I was uh, one of the podcast hosts that, you know, received pitches from 150 people. And um, there were a ton of awesome individuals in that group, including yourself, uh, Mm -hmm. and that all have this incredible story and, and the work that you do uh, is impacting a ton of people's lives. And, you know, one of the key things that you, you focus on in, in the people that you serve and help is you know, talking about relationships and how they impact or how they're impacted, I should say, um, with the work that we do. So tell us a little bit about you and how you got into this work and, you know, some of the things that you're seeing your clients uh, struggle with. Well, I, uh, you know, we teach what we most need to learn, (laughs) right? So I've been someone who long prioritized work and my clients over my relationships. And it took now being in my 50s and being in a relationship that's really the healthiest and best and most fulfilling I've ever had, when I noticed that similar pattern started starting to creep in where uh, I was taking clients late in the day or I was continuing to work on stuff after dinner or, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's so easy and, and I work at home. So it's way too easy to let work bleed into home life. Um, It's very hard to find a separation and create a separation. And so when I noticed that pattern starting to happen, um, I really took responsibility and, uh, you know, worked with my partner to find a way to have our relationship uh, be as important and as, as prioritized as the work that I'm doing in the world. And so this is what I, I end up helping other people with quite a bit. Um, sometimes it's the reverse thing. They have a good relationship, but something is off in how they're relating to their work. And what I find is that the skills that we are naturally strong in, in one arena can be transferred or fed over to the other arena and help us there too. And a lot of times we just haven't thought of it that way, that, that there's way more connection with how we are at home to how we are at work than we consciously realize. And so I help people make that conscious and be more deliberate. And that's crucial. And one of the things that I, I hammer home with people when I'm helping people recover from burnout or prevent it is oftentimes we're trying to be two different people. Uh, we're yes. trying to be you know, somebody, a boss or an employee at work, and then their home life is different. And sometimes if we're going out with friends, we're different there. And it, it, it just gets confusing. It's like, you know, to, you know, who are we? And uh, we need to harmonize all of that because we are one being. And yes, we're doing different tasks and activities, but at the, the core of our, our being is we need to be who we are and, yes. and, and harmonize those things in, in a work in life uh, situation. When I hear work-life balance, I don't believe of balance. Uh, it's like trying to balance an egg. It's like, it's I'm gonna, with you. It, totally. it, I don't use that word either. It's, it's a harmony type of thing. It is a harmony and, a, and, and an integration, you know, it's, it's because there are times where maybe you're in the middle of a launch and you are going to be pushing harder at work. And so it's not about balance, but it's about uh, really integrating yourself into the fabric of all that you're doing. I love that, that you, that you highlighted that because a lot of what I do with people is really help them um, connect into the truth of who they are and what they actually want, which is often different than what they were taught to want, what the culture says we should want, what, um, you know, perhaps our religion or our, our 
educational system says we should want. And so I help people figure out what the authentic thing is and then do that thing in all the areas. And then you get so much happier and more fulfilled because you're actually being yourself. And it makes it easier to kind of shift gears throughout yes. your day because otherwise you, you're just so disjointed and you're, and you're not being your true self throughout your day because you're at work and it's like, well, I'm, I got to act this way or in yeah. which we do. We, there's behaviors and cultural things that we have to be in alignment, but it should be something that's natural that we don't have to think about. Um, right. And as I, I joke with people a lot, it's a good thing that our bodies naturally breathe on their own because I think many of us uh, get so far into our head that we would probably forget how to breathe and we exactly. just would uh, and, and not, you know, not take that time to actually, you know, take stock of what's going on in life. One of the things we talked about in, in the pre-show as well is when you're doing the type of work that you do and you're working with a lot of people and they're dealing with all kinds of different challenges and you have all of these things coming at you, you face a dilemma. And I, you know, we, as we talked about, you know, we're, we're kind of both in the same boat on this where there's just so much going on for us that we have this dilemma of almost work overload for us and, and, and the difficulty of trying to discern okay, what do we need to be focusing on? What do we need to work on now? What do we need to take a break from? Or what do we need to say no to? And, you know, I, we, we both talk about that in, in the work that we do on you know, having that permission to, to say no, uh, to make sure that our relationships and our lives are, are well in tune and, and better harmonized. But uh, even for us, you know, we run into those situations. So, you know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's really up for me right now. Uh, I, I, not only do I love my work, but I also have other passions that I love, like underwater photography and writing and, and spending time with my man, you know? So um, I recently realized this summer, we've been in a long remodel of a home that's on the other side of the country. Um, and so we're going back and forth to check on it. We thought we would move back in June. It's been delayed again. And so with that, on top of all the wonderful things that uh, I love to do, I realized at the end of July, I had scheduled way too many things and or into August and some of it's vacation and some of it's business related. And I realized, I just had to cancel something. I really wanted to do it. It's, it's a community I love. It's a conference that I really wanted to be attending. And it's just too much. And in the conversation with my partner, what we decided to do for the time being, which I think is a great way to, if you're not good at saying no, which I am not always good at because I love everything I do. And so I tend to think, yes, it's a great idea to go diving right after we do this retreat or whatever it is. And, and then I realized that was too much, right? But um, so what we've decided to do is hold a, a quote unquote business meeting between ourselves once a week. We're going to start with once a week where we look over the schedule, especially our travel schedule, and honestly evaluate every single thing. Do we want to do this? If I've scheduled something for business, is that still aligned? Is that something I should maybe cancel to make more room for us, et cetera? So uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in enrolling people to help you if you're not good at a certain thing and saying no isn't my strength. I mean, it's my strength in certain places, but when it's talking about all the things that I love to do, I'm less good at it because I want to do it all. Uh, and so I'm having to learn how to prioritize and I'm enrolling him and helping me to learn how to prioritize because he's got a clearer eye in some ways than I do on my schedule. So he'll ask me questions like, really, are you sure you only want one day turnaround between this and that? You know, maybe you want to build in some extra time. Is that a spot where you need to take a day off or you need to maybe fly a day later, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one 
way that you could have your relationship and your work be more integrated is actually invite your partner into helping you schedule yourself. If you're an entrepreneur and you tend to have overload, maybe your partner has a, has a better eye than you do or would ask the right questions that would help you remember that you want to have downtime and you want to spend time with them <laughs> or your kids if you have kids or whatever the scenario is. Well, that's absolutely precious information and advice because you know, they will see um, things that you won't. And you know, I'm in a similar situation where, where my partner, she's a whole lot better at scheduling than I am. Uh, and she can see things um, that I, I often can't. And even you know, in, in places where I've had to do scheduling of shifts for you know, people that work in an organization that I was helping out, I would, I would have her, it's like, here, can you do this? Because I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have 10 people at one shift and nobody at another. And mm -hmm. even if you color code it and you can see gaps, it's like, I just, I, I, that's a, that's a skill set that I um, am very, very weak in. And I acknowledge that. And then, and I could spend time to try to make it better. Or I could say, you know what, I'm going to delegate that off to somebody else that, uh, that yeah. does it. But Absolutely. yes, but saying no and, and having the permission to do that uh, makes sense. And, and even, you know, like with me, with, you know, with the podcast shows and all of that, you know, I look at my schedule and oftentimes I'll, because you know, I automate uh, a lot of the scheduling and there was one tool that I was using for a little bit that was double booking, which obviously doesn't work. Uh, so oh, I had, wow. I decided to, you know, I had to fire that scheduler and, and go back to something that I was using before, but you know, you, you shuffle it around and, and you got to give yourself enough time to, uh, to do those things. And it's something that I enjoy, but also, you know, not overload your day where you are, you know, interviewing 30 people in a day. Yes. You know? oh, oh, only, only Chris Burns can do that. <laughs> 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 yeah. And he, he's, he's a marathon and if, uh, I definitely look him up people because he, he does some great work at, yeah, he does those marathon sessions. So like, how in the world can you do that? But Well, no. I, I, I want to speak to that for a second because I think the important thing, it comes back to knowing yourself and it comes back to what you said earlier in the call, like being yourself everywhere. And so if you know that your, your, you, your best number of interviews in a day is five or something like that, then you block that off. Like you only allow five people to book. But if you know that you do best doing 30 in a day and just banging it out once a month kind of thing, then you schedule it that way. But the important piece is the self-knowledge and to trust your own wiring and honor it. We'll be back to the show in a moment. But first, I want to let you know today's show is brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, CloudHQ. With CloudHQ, you get access to over 20,000 influencers that have been curated by brands just like yours. If you're a brand, you know how difficult it is to find and connect with the influencers that your audience already knows and trusts. That's why I suggest you get CloudHQ. When you sign up today, you get access to over 20,000 influencers on Instagram. You can see loads of data about their profile and engagement rates before you reach out, and you have direct access to their contact information so you can reach out to them on or off the platform. When you reach out to them on the platform, they offer automation tools so you can reach out to a bunch of those influencers at one time. This will save you a lot of time and I guarantee it'll pay for itself in the first year. For Breakfast Leadership listeners, I'm offering a special discount. Normally, an enterprise subscription would go for over $1,500 a year. My friends at CloudHQ are offering a subscription for just $499 a year. That's a savings of over $1,000. You can sign up today by using the discount code BREAKFAST and save, like I said, over $1,000 a year. CloudHQ is a wonderful option for any brands that are looking to influence their marketing and looking to get their program off the ground. So sign up today using the link in our show notes and use the code BREAKFAST and let me know what you think. Like I said, I guarantee it'll pay for itself in its first year. CloudHQ is an amazing offer and it's a good option for anybody that's interested in influencer marketing. Now back to the show. It's so important. And, and as much as I would love for me to say, okay, I know what the the perfect ingredient is for an ideal day for me when it comes to that. It ebbs and flows. You know, some mm. some days um, I have you know four or five interviews, and the way that I feeling you know first part of the day, I look at it and I go, I, I kind of wish it was one or two. 
And, mm-hmm. but, but then I get into it and then, you know, the, the, the energy and the rhythm flows and it's good. And then there are days where I only have a couple and I'm like, darn, I wish I had more today. But, <laughs> and funny? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just like eager. It's like, it's like, yeah, talk to somebody else. And then, <laughs> and, 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 and then I talk to my, you know, my partner and, and, and she thinks, boy, yeah, I kind of wish you had more people to talk to as well because <laughs> they'll talk her <laughs> ear off. Um, uh, she, she refers to it sometimes as, you know, I, I go into describe video mode and it just starts, to, <laughs> which, is, right. which is funny. Um, but it, 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 it keeps me entertained for sure. But, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's a dilemma and it's one of those things that I find you, you have to, and I love the exercise of, of looking at it every week and go, okay, what does my week ahead look like? And that's something that I do as well to see, okay, is there any, you know, slack time? Is there any time? Did I, was I intentional to, mm-hmm. to block off time for me and, and mm-hmm. self-care and personal and, and all that? Because if you don't, um, it catches up to you really, really quick and you run into those situations where you, you have a month like you had indicated, it's like, there's just too much. I have to, I have to not skip that conference. I have to say no to that um, coffee meeting or that lunch date or that dinner event, because again, they're all great. They, you, you'll find opportunities, especially if you have a growth mindset um, that every experience and opportunity is an opportunity for you to grow and learn something yes. new, but you also have to, you know, come at it from a, a, a place where you are, you know, taking care of yourself and energizing yourself mm-hmm. because otherwise you're going to miss out on, on those lessons because you're going to be too tired to, to listen or receive anything that you're you know, getting from that particular meeting or conference or conversation. That's exactly right. And, and for me, the difference being able to gauge that is whether or not I'm being run by uh, the part of me that's concerned about missing out or that wants to do things right. You know, when I, when, when I find that when a part of me steps forward, that's more driven and wants to, you know, make sure I quote unquote do business right that's when I'm in danger of making choices that aren't really aligned with my actual capacity or even my desire. Um, And so I have to do the work each day to make sure I situate myself in the part of myself that's seeing the whole picture, that's seeing like, yes, I'm a person who loves my work and loves, uh, you know, being in those deep and intricate and gorgeous uh, spaces with people privately uh, you know, as as my clients, but also loves connecting with people at conferences and things like that. That's me, but I'm also someone who's kind of a bookworm and who likes to cuddle up with a book or, and I love my partner. I actually want to spend time with him and our dogs, you know, and, and uh, so I have to stay situated in the part of me that remembers the whole picture and doesn't get too far ahead of myself in terms of being focused solely on business or the impact I want to make or my quote unquote purpose. Like what I'm realizing about purpose is if I'm not living my quote unquote purpose in every part of my life, then that's not, I'm not doing it, you know? So if I'm not practicing what I'm preaching, if I'm not taking time off, if I'm not nurturing my relationship, if I'm not um, eating well or sleeping enough, then it actually impacts my ability to be not just effective with my clients. What I'm talking about, it impacts my integrity level so that when I'm saying to a client, you need to change this thing or asking them if this is really working for them. If I'm not in integrity in my own life, it makes that a less powerful question. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk because if you're, giving advice uh, to a client on how to better balance, or excuse me, I use the B yeah. word, I use the B word, better yeah. harmonize their life. Um, if you're not demonstrating that yourself, uh, they may not recognize it consciously, but subconsciously they will. 
and, exactly. and it, 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 then it, it causes them some confusion and oftentimes even a lack of clarity. They may not uh, receive it as, as best they could if you uh, were coming from a, from a space of, of being in, in, in harmony. And, and, and we both know this. This mm-hmm. is something that is um, much like, you know, you know, taking a bath or a shower. It's highly recommended that we do it frequently. And it's <laughs> the same thing with, with this. It's, I, I believe me, I would love to say, okay, this is how my schedule will be set and I don't have to think about it, but uh, that's not how life is. And, and mm-hmm. quite frankly, it's not how I would want life to be because then it just becomes mundane and right uh again going with you know being a person with a growth mindset it 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 makes life so much more rich when you you experience different things and and do other things so if there was one one piece of advice you would give somebody that is um you know dealing with this uh relationship and and work um conundrum of trying mm-hmm. to harmonize everything you know what's what's one common thing that you see uh, that you help people with uh that that makes a big difference for them uh both now and the future i would say come back to your body because very often uh when we're in this kind of dilemma where we're working too hard and we're kind of avoiding you know it gets to the point sometimes where you start to avoid your relationship a little bit because you feel guilty and then you just kind of don't want to face it and then you just keep spending more and more time at work and all of that all of that is a fairly heady process and our bodies are an incredible barometer and and resource for information for the true information of how we're doing because our thoughts can lie we can we can make up stories about what's happening we can fool ourselves that everything's fine but our bodies uh don't lie so what i say to someone who's in that dilemma is is to start paying attention how does your body feel at work in the first hour the second hour the eighth hour you know at what is there a moment where your body starts to tighten or you start to feel drained or whatever your cue is I teach people to really learn to listen to what their own cues are for when they need to stop a certain activity, stand up and take a break. Um, And the same thing at home, notice in your body, when do you feel relaxed and open and, and smooth in your body? And when do you feel tight and restricted? And what is that telling you about your situation? And then once you have more information on the bodily level, then you can start to make the changes that it, it's asking for. So it might be asking you to take some more rest, or it might be asking you to get up and walk uh, every hour for a few five minutes or something. Um, but until you tune into it, you're never going to know what the needs are. So I start there. That's perfect. And it's a great way to really get you know back to yourself. And then from there, then you start adding adding the things back in, in, in a way that makes sense uh, for, yes. for everybody. And everybody can be a little bit different, but it's exactly, it, it's that's like, the what, key. there's no blanket thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, and it's good uh, because it gives us uh, creativity to, you know, really, really help a variety of different people uh, going forward. So where can people find out more about you and the awesome work that you're doing? My website is M-E-M-A-L-I dot com. So it's my initials, M-E for Marie Elizabeth. And then Molly, which is spelled like the country, M-A-L-I dot com. And I also have a free gift there. If you scroll down the homepage, you'll see uh, a link to the Leap Your Confidence formula, which is a four-step process for having more confidence in conversations in different situations, because again, you're doing this situating yourself and giving yourself permission. Um, So go pick that up. And, um, and I'd love to talk with anyone. I am accepting a few more clients. And so I'd love to talk with anyone who'd like to have a clarity session. That's awesome. And I'll definitely have, have all that information in the show notes. So Marie Elizabeth, great to connect with you again. Thank you again for um, your patience. And just as a side note audience, we've rescheduled this 
conversation so many times I lost count um, <laughs> because, because of schedules and all of that. But I'm so thankful we finally were able to reconnect. Uh, so thank you again for being on the show. Me too. Thank you. I'm so glad it worked out for today. It's likewise. Likewise. So until next time, everybody, be well. Hey, it's Michael again. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. If you're like many people, you're dealing with some significant stress and possibly approaching burnout. I know how you feel. In 2009, my burnout led to a year of worst case scenarios. I do not want that to happen to you. If you go to breakfastleadership.com, you can register for a free webinar on burnout prevention, as well as get as a free checklist to have successful mornings. Start off each day the right way. Again, that's at breakfastleadership.com. Also, since you are a loyal podcast listener, I'm asking you to like, rate, and review my podcast on iTunes. I look at all the reviews and appreciate your comments, and it helps other potential listeners discover the content I have on the show. I appreciate you, and thanks again for listening.